I'm here today in von Siebenthal with Mauro von Siebenthal. And how long have you been here in Chile? Because with a name like this, we know that you're not Chilean. Yes, of course, <laughs> I'm not Chilean. I'm, I, I come from Switzerland, yes. Uh, it's about 20 years, uh, I arrived about 20 years ago in, in Chile, uh, just for a, for a holiday, just for um, distress from my job. And uh, when I came first to the Aconcagua Valley, I, I fell in love from, from, for the nature, uh, for the valley. And uh, I thought, oh, it is the place I can, I can maybe realize my, my project, my dream. And uh, so that is st I started to buy a small parcel and then more and more. And today we own about 30 hectares mm -hmm. and we are producing wine as was my, my dream. Fabulous. Yeah. And when you, start, when you had your dream, what did it involve? Kind of making a certain wine in particular or was it living amongst the vineyards? What is it that fascinated you about making wine and being yeah. a vineyard? It's, it's curious because nobody in my family has a, a relation with, uh, with wine, uh, wine making or uh, <laughs> wine producing or whatever. But um, I was, uh, I was uh, I was very young when I started to collect wine. That was mm -hmm. my interest. I don't know why exactly, or maybe it was fascinating from from the relation between uh, the humankind and and the nature, and um, and so uh, I always dream to to make a project like this. But uh, uh, I study uh, I study uh, at Geneva Law School, so I graduate as as a lawyer and um, I spent almost half of my life being a, a lawyer in Switzerland. Uh -huh. yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. And then how long, you came here first 20 years ago on holiday. Yes. And how long have you been making your wine for von Siebenthal? Oh well, at the same, at the same trip I, 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 I started um, buying the first parcel. So, wow, uh, so it was a real yes, connection. Yes, <laughs> yes, a really very strong connection. Uh, the nature is very nice. The climate is very interesting. Uh, it, it's a climate is very luminous. Uh, there's a, there's a, uh, it's it's so near from from the ocean. Mm. You know, Pankewe is between uh, Andes and ocean. Uh, so the climate is really fantastic. And uh, well, so I, I I we we planted the, the first vineyard, and we realized a, a small a small. Uh, um, a small harvest the first uh, uh, 2002 that was the first so about four years after my first trip to mm -hmm. Chile yeah and what did you plant here because we're in the Aconcagua region which is quite well known for its for its reds but what were your varieties of choice yes you know it's very important uh, we, we can say that Chile has a, a fantastic uh, uh, a fantastic uh, how to say uh, it's po possibility to to uh, to produce uh, a large, a large variety of uh, of, of, uh, of of wines and uh, and fruits, and uh, but it depend it depend mostly about the soil. Mm -hmm. So, the Aconcagua Valley it's very interesting because the soil is a volcanic soil, but there's an influence also from the river and from the glacier. Uh, so we can we can find different type of soil, um, clay soil, uh, alluvial soil, of course, and also uh, stony soil, granitic mm -hmm. soil uh, in in the hill. Uh, so the variety depends of the of the soil. Uh, so in front of the bodega, I planted variety like uh, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Carmenere. And in the hill, uh, more uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, for instance. So that was the first. But you know, that is the that is a tradition in, in Chile to to work with uh, with international grapes, uh, especially from Bordeaux. Mm. And that's it's, it's a good coincidence because I I love Bordeaux wines. So uh, all my life I was a collector of of Bordeaux wine. Uh, so the the, the the grapes I planted. Uh, particularly come from Bordeaux, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, and Petit Verdot. But also is interesting the climate for, 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 for grapes like Syrah and Viognier. So we produce also Syrah <laughs> and Viognier, which is not... So a, li a little bit of Rhone in... See, yes, absolutely. <laughs> a little it's bit not of Rhone in your yes, Bordeaux yes, experience. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. But that was a, that, that was a, a, 
because really the climate uh, uh, allows us to, uh, to produce also this kind of, of, of white grapes, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Viognier, and, uh, and a cousin of the Viognier, which is a Syrah, or a, a cousin of a Syrah is a Viognier. Yeah. Fabulous. And we're going to taste your Tokna, which is a very special wine, not just for you, but also for, for Chile. Can you tell us a bit about this variety, or this, what is this variety? Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yes. Tokna <laughs> is a 100% is a Petit Verdot, and, uh, which is not common. Uh, and I planted, uh, I planted Petit Verdot because, uh, because when, when, I, when I, I arrived in Chile, I, I heard a meat, which is, was of course wrong, that Chilean wine doesn't age well, Chilean wine doesn't have a structure. So I was a little bit afraid uh, and <laughs> I, I thought I will, I will plant Petit Verdot so <laughs> I, will, I will have structure and uh, a long aging potential. So I planted Petit Verdot but then I discovered that of course Chilean wine can age uh, very well, including without Petit Verdot and the Chilean wine have a fantastic structure. It depends of the vinification. But the Petit Verdot was, uh, was planted and, uh, and I was very happy because the first harvest um, was very, in were very interesting and uh, uh, the Petit Verdot wa was very, very strong, uh, but uh, with a lot, of, of, uh, with lot of, of fruits and, uh, and um, uh, it's, it was a really, a really a, a, a interesting wine. Uh, the, the names, the names, it also means a stone because uh, the vineyard is a stony soil, mm -hmm. and also the wine it's very hard. Um, but with two years in barrel and uh, four years in bottle before release, also the tannins are smooth and so. It's, um, and yeah. it's very, I mean. Petit Verdot is often used as a blending grape, as you said, to give the structure and the backbone. But this is beautiful. It's got it's got quite lovely little floral aroma in the yeah. top as well, yeah. and nice yeah. fruit aromas. Yeah. And the tannins are very approachable. Yeah. Do you yeah. put that down to the sunshine, the soil, or the winemaking? Uh, I believe it's uh, it's especially from from the sunshine, uh, from the luminosity. You know, the, the, the sky is very clear in Aconcagua. It's, we are not talking about um, warm climate, so, but luminosity. So the skin, <coughs> which, is important, uh, which is important for the tannins, it's, how to say, it's really uh, little by little uh, destroyed uh, from, from the luminosity of the sky. So uh, that is very important for the, for the smoothness of this, tan this tannin. And of course, um, the soil it's important because uh, normally in uh, in Bordeaux uh, the Petit Verdot was is not planted on a hill but in a, in a, in, a, in a plain and uh, the maturity it's a little bit hard in Bordeaux but here is the first grape we we, we harvest is the Petit Verdot. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, tell us a little bit about Aconcagua because it's a region that's named after a mountain. <laughs> so what yeah. is it like here when you visit the vineyard? Oh well, Aconcagua is a, is a nice valley. First of all, it's very, very uh, close to, to to Santiago. It's about 100 kilometers, mm -hmm. uh, with two freeways. Uh, they come here, and uh, Aconcagua is a very important historic valley for Chile. Uh, not only during the the colony time, but also before the colony time. The, the Aconcagua Valley was one of the first. Um, one of the first valley with inhabitants in in Chile, oh. and yes, and uh, uh, in the in the 15th century, in at, at the end of the 15th century, it, it was uh, it was occupied by Inca uh, Empire, but uh, 60 years after the first uh, uh, the first uh, Inca, uh, you know, uh, uh, the first time the Inca came here. They arrived in Spain, you know, so so there was the Spanish uh, conquista, and um, and that Aconcagua was the first play with they had this this contact, uh, this this contact, this contrast between inhabitants and and uh, people coming from mm. from Peru from from Spain, and uh, and then a year later, uh, the Aconcagua 
was one of the first um, one of the first uh, region for for producing wine in in, in Chile, and uh, during 300 years was one of the most important place because it was it was um, possible to 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 have a, um, to have vineyard uh, in Aconcagua because to south to Santiago. Um, the Indians, the, 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 the inhabitants had, a, 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 you know, a, how to say, resistant. Mm -hmm. so, so, uh, so it was complicated to have a vineyard in, a, uh, so, so no, in Curicó, in Apalta, uh -huh. or, you know. Uh, well, done in the 19, at the middle of the 19th century, uh, in, in exactly in Panquehue, uh, Maximiano Rassori, which is my neighbor, Vineyard Rassori, planted one of the most important vineyards in Chile. And so there's a tradition of, of, of wine making here in the valley. Um, so uh, actually, actually, th there's a there's a, a project for a tunnel between Chile and Argentina, uh, connecting 